All right, try to build a cell even hypothetically. Assemble a dream team of all your best professors, and you say, can you make a living cell if, given, if, if, if you were to give them the chemicals in homochiral form and the informational code? So say, I'll give you all the chemicals. Can you build a cell? No. All right, I'll give you the informational code. I'll give you DNA in any order that you want. I'll give it to you. I'll give you the RNA in any order that you want. I'll even give you the enzymes all assembled. I'll give you the, the lipids all in homochiral form, whatever lipids you want. I'll give you all the proteins, all the ionophores, all the carbohydrates in whatever form you want. Here they are all in separate bottles in your modern laboratory, not under a rock outside, but could you make a cell? And anybody in their right mind would say, no way. I have no idea how to put, assemble those together into a cell. And even if I could, I, I, I don't know how to get the thing running that would spark life. We have no idea. You say, well, you've read about synthetic cells. In 2010, Craig Venter's team copied an existing bacteria, bacterial genome and transplanted it into another cell. They call that a synthetic cell. So I buy a Corvette. What I do is I take out the computer control box, and I take out the chip, a little chip about that big, and I go into my fabrication facility, and I copy that chip make a copy of that chip. And then I take that chip that I made, I stick it back in, and boom, the car runs. Can I say, I made that Corvette? No, you didn't make that Corvette. You just copied an existing chip. You just copied an existing, and you stuck that into the nucleus. That's not a synthetic cell. Everything was already there.